Hey folks, Connor from Nice Wheels here, and I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about how to change a rear flat on your Brompton. So in this video, we'll go through all of the tools that you'll need to change a rear flat, and we'll go through all of the minute steps of the process that you'll need to know to do it the right way. All right, so now that you have your brand new tube inside of the tire and in the rim, you can go ahead and just pop the wheel back on the frame of the Brompton and just make sure that your chain is looping around. Remember to put it back onto the smaller cog here in the back. And you can go ahead and just kind of push the tire through the, uh, through the brakes. Since there's no air in it, uh, you'll be able to just kind of squeeze those through. Now the axles on each side have a flat spot, so you want to make sure that those are turned in the right direction so that it just pops in gently uh, back into the frame. So you want to come back to those little uh, washers with the uh, kind of notches on them that one of them goes in the frame and one of them goes under the axle. And you want to make sure that top side, in our case, since the bike is upside down, is facing downward. Or just that it's towards the saddle. And you just want to plug that back in there. There's a spot where it'll notch right into the frame. The other one will remain on the bottom. You can get your other one on the other side. And those washers help position the wheel in the right way uh, for the hub to work the way that it's intended. If you have a two speed or a single speed, uh, you don't have those, you just have a standard washer. And uh, you just want to make sure that the wheel is set into the frame, uh, you know, nice and tight. But that's pretty easy to do when the bike is upside down. Then next thing you want to come to are your two uh, bolts that are going to bolt the wheel back onto the frame. And it doesn't matter which side which bolt goes on, so you can just kind of hand thread those in until they start touching the other washer. And once you start to feel some tension on those, you want to come back to your 15 millimeter and just start tightening that. And you want to kind of tighten one side at a time, uh, alternating, so that you're not tightening one all the way and then tightening the other one all the way. You kind of want to work both sides into it uh, evenly, or as evenly as you can, just to make sure that everything is tightened properly. And now that that's all good and set in there, you can go ahead and grab your chain tensioner. Now an easy way to put this on is just to thread the chain kind of through the larger hole on the tensioner and get that spot there where it, it mounts. Now when you're looking at it upside down, uh, it's gonna go over the bottom of this wheel. Uh, if the bike rides right side up, it's gonna go over the top of the main wheel. And you wanna just flex the other end of the tensioner there and kind of get the chain behind it and between both of these wheels. And then finally, you just want to fasten the uh, tensioner to the frame so you can grab your large washer, put that through the chain. And then there's one side of this bolt that has a little notch in it, so that's what you want to face uh, in towards the frame. And you can just start hand tightening that. And once you got that good and finger tight, you can grab your 15 millimeter wrench again and just tighten that down. Now you're gonna come back to the little bolt that you first took off of the chain on the little gear indicator chain and you just wanna thread that a little less than halfway down. You won't need it too much down, but just enough so that you can thread it back into the other half of the chain and start putting those together. And when you're putting them together, you do want a little bit of play here in the indicator chain. Uh, that way you can get all of your gears in your internal hub shifting smoothly. So not too tight, not too loose, just kind of right in the middle. So something like that is just fine. If you don't have the pliers, you would want to just hand tighten that as best you can. Uh, but then once you do get around to a bike shop or home, if you have the tools, uh, to definitely tighten that down with a pair of pliers because it could come loose uh, while you're riding if you just leave it hand tight. So now that your wheel is back in the bike and spinning all good, 
Uh, it's good to always have your uh, Brompton pump with you. If you have a steel Brompton, uh, you're gonna have the mounting point on the frame that you can just pop that right off and use it. Uh, if you have a titanium Brompton, yours probably didn't come with it, but it's always good to have some kind of portable hand pump uh, if you are commuting on your bike often or just going out for a long ride. So the Brompton hand pump is not gonna be able to pump up your tire to the right PSI that you need. What it's really good for is just getting enough in air in there that you can ride to your nearest gas station or bike shop, uh, just somewhere that you can fill it up to the right PSI to really get you back going again. All right, so now that that's good, you can undo the pump. And now you can see that uh, if you feel the tire, you're not really getting as much PSI as you normally had. So when you're starting to ride again, uh, just be mindful of that, especially if it's the rear wheel. Uh, that you're not having the right pressure, so be careful of more bumps and, uh, and any cracks that you're riding over because you are at risk of getting a pinch flat again uh, because of the air pressure being so low. Again, this is just to really get you to the nearest point that you can fill up to the right PSI. So if you have Marathon tires or Marathon Plus tires, uh, 80 to 85 PSI is good. Um, but if you don't have a, a gauge for your pressure, um, then you can just, you know, kind of feel it out. Make sure that it's hard enough for, uh, you know, for what you're used to or whatever size rider you are. Uh, if you're a heavier guy, you might want to put some more air in there just to prevent flats. If you're a little lighter and you want a little more comfort out of the ride, uh, you know, around 80 is a good place to be. If you have Kojax or the Brompton Kevlar tires, go ahead and pump those up to 100, even a little more than that if you want a, a really fast ride on those tires. Thanks so much for watching this nice tutorial on how to change the flat on your Brompton. Uh, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as turn on your notifications to let you know when we release more tutorials.